Whatever I'm doing with computers and machine learning was impacted by my own um, experience as a breast cancer patient at MGH. I was treated very well. Uh, but one thing that really struck me is how much uncertainty patients have uh, and how much all this data that is collected in the hospitals is really not used. And as a patient, I saw that I was an exception. But once I was treated, I was actually looking at the website of American Society of Clinical Oncologists, and I found statistics that I found to be a travesty. The statistic says that today, uh, all the clinical decisions are based mostly on 3% of the populations that participated in clinical trials, which means that tons of data that is collected about the patients, people like me who were not part of any clinical trial, is not utilized. And when the whole process of cancer treatment, and we've had it from the previous speakers, has so much uncertainty, and it's really a non-deterministic process where big data can make a huge difference. So after I came back to MIT after the treatment, I decided I'm going to change it. And I was lucky enough to find um, doctors at MGH, Dr. Kevin Kuse and Dr. Constance Lehman, who also believe that the situation has to be changed. And together with my student, we started this journey. So the first uh, things that we've done was actually to take this big data, and the previous speakers were talking about, in the area of breast cancer pathologists, which currently is not utilized. And if you look even at the top journals in pathology, uh, many studies are really, really tiny, because now it requires somebody to sit down and encode information by hand to do the study. So we decided to change it. We took all the pathologies available um, about um, from breast cancer from partners, and we translated the free text into a database. So now you can automatically identify all the women who had this condition and maybe in five years recurred. You can easily identify the populations that you need and there is no human in the loop. The database currently has 160,000 reports, which are coded in these 20 fields. So it's a very large database. It spans over three decades, and it's already used in many studies that look at uh, cancer progression and uh, the development of ATPs. Uh, another direction that we are working on, and again, impacted by my experience as a uh, cancer patient, is uh, to better utilize imaging data that we have. So currently, you do your mammogram. It's a pretty large image. It's 3,000 pixels. Uh, it's read by a human who can only notice limited amount of information that is in this mammogram. And uh, then it's summarized into a short text. And a lot, a lot of information is really lost here. Machines are really good in reading, you know, millions of these mammograms and answering questions which humans cannot answer today. Like, for instance, to do personalized risk assessment of breast cancer given specific tissue of the woman. So you can train machine to take this image and say, what is the likelihood in five years that the patient may develop cancer? Or to see whether the patient like myself, who is on medications, uh, responds to medication or not. And variety of other questions. Is a woman heading towards recurrence? So all this data is available. Uh, there are a lot of progress. I'm sure you all learned about deep learning. So instead of using deep learning to recognize different types of cats, we are trying to use it to learn about uh, development of cancer.